guys and welcome. Today I really wanted to do a video about what to look for and where to look when buying your new bow python. I really do get a lot of questions where people want me to recommend a place to get your bow python. Today I'm gonna give you my tips and tricks on what to look for when buying one. With me today I have Rowena. Rowena is a purple passion bow python which means that she's a move type. First off I'm going to assume that when you're looking for a bow python that means that you already bought your terrarium, you already bought the setup, the heating, the lightning, everything is perfect in there. What you really need is your snake. So that's where we are gonna go from. The first thing you should look for uh, when buying a bull python is the overall health of the animal. What is it looking like? Is it looking healthy? Is it looking too skinny? Is it looking too fat? How is the, the animal in general looking? Uh, the good signs of a bull python is that it has a proper size. It doesn't look too fat, doesn't look too skinny. When they're too skinny, uh, the whole body almost come like a uh, like a triangle. You're not in doubt when you're seeing a bull python that is too skinny. A skinny bull python may indicate that the previous owner wasn't feeding them right. It could be an illnesses or they could simply be in a feeding stop. I still haven't found out what that's called in, re <laughs> in English, but when, when they've stopped eating, pretty much like fasting. The second thing you should look for in a bull python is if it has any illnesses. One of the most common illnesses are blood mites. And and blood mites are just terrible. They're terrible to have and they're really difficult to get rid of. I'm speaking from experience here. We once bought two animals. They were two lizards actually. We bought them from a private person and we didn't, uh, we didn't check out the animal and we really should have and we paid for that because the animals were full of blood mites. What happened was that when we brought them up here in the reptile room suddenly everyone had blood mites and I'm talking all of the snake. It was a nightmare. Always check for blood mites. Checking for blood mites is pretty easy. What you do is you take the snake and then you do like this with your hand all the way down and you look on your hand and if it has little red spots on it and even or even spots of blood then that means that could be blood mites. If the animal has blood mites, don't buy into what the what the seller is saying or how you can easily treat it. Just leave the animal alone. Don't don't do it unless unless you've dealt with it before and you know what the consequences are of blood mites. The third thing you should really look into when buying bull pythons are the feeding habit. As I've talked about before, bull pythons can be pretty picky eaters, which also means that if you haven't talked about what you're feeding your bull pythons, you might end up with a bull python who will only take live prey. If you're not comfortable with that, then that's gonna be really, really uncomfortable for the both of you because you will have to feed live. Always make sure that the bull python has good feeding habits. That means that it's takes dead, not only pre-kill, but also uh, frozen, you know, thawed rats and mice. Very good sign, so always make sure that your ball python does take dead. The fourth thing you should always make sure is whether or not your ball python has been raised in a terrarium or in a rack, because that can have an effect on how the ball python is doing home at your house. So let's say that you may have bought a ball python who has only been used to racks for a long time and you're having a terrarium. It can stress the ball python quite a lot which means that stress leads to not eating and that's bad. I myself successfully bought both this girl and my golden one, you've met her. I bought both of them from a keeper who was keeping them in racks and they have no trouble living in terrariums right now. So I've been quite lucky, but it can be a factor, it can be a stress factor if you take your ball python from a, from a rack and then put it in a terrarium or vice versa. It can happen, it's not 100% sure, but there is a chance of it. So just to be sure, you should check up on that. The fifth thing that you should really check is the overall history of the animal. What has it been used to? Is it was it bred from the from the seller or has it been been sold various times? It's not always a bad thing that the snake has had several owners, not at all. But it can be a sign of maybe an aggressive bull python or problems with eating again. So just uh, just check up on it just to be sure. It is not unusual that bull pythons go from home to home, not at all, or snakes in general, but it's it's always a good thing to check up on just so you know where your snake is coming from. The sixth thing you should always have a look at is whether or not your ball python comes with papers. And with papers I mean a piece of certificate where you can clearly see where your snake was bred and who the parents was. Especially if you're buying a moth 
it's pretty pretty uh, important that you get the piece of paper because that contains evidence of the genes inside your ball python. You cannot always see the genes in the uh, in the look of the ball python. So with this piece of paper, you can basically be 100% sure that that is the genes that the ball python has. Also, depending on the genes, it's gonna cost a lot more. So if you don't have that piece of paper and you pay a good amount of money for a snake, you may end up with a snake that doesn't have the genes and you've paid a loads of amount of money for it. So what you should always do is have a good look what the overall price is in your area. Of course, it varies depending on male or female, and then go for something around that. Last but not least, my favorite place to buy ball pythons are from reptile expos. I do buy a lot of my animals at reptile expos, and I do that because usually it's the breeder you're talking to himself when you're there, which means you can spend a good amount of time talking face to face to the man or woman who's actually bred the animal who knows about them. So I always recommend that and people are so nice at reptile expos. Everyone just has the best interest of the animal at heart. So I highly recommend that. The other thing you can do is that you can also buy them through websites of uh, one of the big breeders like Bob Clark is really a big breeder when it comes to when it comes to ball pythons. He's from USA, I believe, but he travels as well to a reptile expo like Ham, which means that you have the opportunity to reserve an animal and he will bring it to the reptile expo. The third thing you can do is joining a reptile Facebook group. I often both had animals on sale and bought animals through those groups. But when you do that, when you're buying from private, you have to be extra, extra careful and you really have to make sure that the animal is in good health. When buying from the big breeders, there is almost a zero chance of the animal being a bad one because they do have a reputation to take care of. And if people started telling them that their snakes are bad or their snakes have illnesses, not many people are gonna buy. So you can always be sure that when you buy from big breeders, they are healthy animals. As I said before, this girl, I bought her from a private home along with my golden bull python. I've had no issue with them. This girl, she was in a feeding stop before I bought her and the owner told me that. So I was aware of that when I bought her and I even paid less than what her morph type is worth because that she was in uh, an eating stop or a fasting but I got her to eat again she's eating very very much uh, not, not long ago I fed her two big mice so she's really really looking good all right guys that was all for today a few tips and tricks on what to look out for when buying your ball python I really hope you could use that if you have any tips or tricks yourself or any experience you would like to share with me please do comment on the video I really love to talk to you guys please give the video a like so I I know that you like what I make it really means a lot to me subscribe to my channel and as usual you can find me on Instagram under the name Justice Jungle thank you for now and bye bye